In this lecture, guys, we are going to start with the Add to Render Queue option just over here. So I'll select this option. And you notice in the timeline here, the Render Queue panel has opened. It has here three main settings, the Render Settings, the Output Module, and Where to Output. Let's go to Best Settings. In the Best Setting here, you can choose the quality, the resolution, and the proxies that we didn't tackle yet, and the time span if it is the work area or full length. In the quality here, you have best draft and wireframe. Draft will give you a low resolution, small size video that you can use just for testing. If you come to resolution, this is actually not the resolution. This is, I would say, it's the size. Because if you, for example, you select half, it's not taking down the resolution of the video. It's just making the video smaller. You will have very good resolution with these sizes here, 640 by 360. If you go to quarter, you have a very small video, which is 320 by 180. Sometimes pretty useful, guys. Okay. In short, you will have very good resolution with different size videos. The proxies here, leave it alone because we didn't tackle it until now. In the time sampling, all you have to take care of is the time span. You want it for the length of the composition or the work area. I will leave it now for work area. That's what we agreed in the previous lecture. And you click OK. It's done. Actually, you haven't done much here. Let's go to output module. If uh, I click on lossless, here there will be the output module settings. You have to choose the format and you have to choose what kind of video you want. First, you are interested in the format here. If you are on Windows, AVI is the standard. You can use AVI and you get very large size videos because it's totally uncompressed, but you get also very good quality videos. Also on Windows, you can use QuickTime, which is pretty good, give you high quality, smaller file size, and it's a .mov, very common files to be used. So on Windows, you have the choice. We will go for the AVI now. I will show you the format options. Then we'll come back for QuickTime for the Mac and Windows. I will jump directly to format options because this is very important. The AVI options, as you can see here, for now, these won't mean much for you and these will change the size here for the NTSC and the PAL. Your best option is none. And you click OK just to preview. In the channels, you want to select RGB. We'll see later how to use the alpha and RGB plus alpha. And actually, that's all there is. You could resize it, but I don't recommend it at this stage. Later on, you will have more experience and you can resize your videos the way you would like. And there is the cropping if you want to, but mainly that's it. You select AVI, you are on Windows and you click OK. Make sure you are in RGB. Now, there is the other good option, which is QuickTime. The QuickTime can be used on the Mac and Windows. I like QuickTime DVDs, they're not bad at all. But in After Effects, the format options, there is only one that you can use, and this is animation. The rest cannot be very used easily. These will change the size of your videos, and uh, these will give you some NTSC and PAL also will change the frame rates if you notice. The best option is animation. Mind you, animation will open in QuickTime Player but animation might not be supported in other video editing programs. So I will select animation and I will click OK. And I will go back to AVI because I'm on Windows. I'm OK with it. And I will click OK. Now, the third option here is where you want to save your file. I'll put it wherever we are working here. It's cool for me. I can find it and click Save. So now you're ready. You did your render settings, output, and where you want to save the file, and actually you click render. And here you are, it's rendering pretty fast for me. Now, of course, you need to find your file. You will go to your file manager. I bring it in, and I have my challenge here. Motion graphics is AVI. Notice the AVI file here is almost half a gigabyte. It's very big for five seconds. Imagine. So if I double click, it will open in the film and TV here for me. I can see the video, pretty beautiful, very nice. It was a half a gigabyte, guys. So actually, guys, this is all about the render queue. It's very easy to use with huge files. Maybe the QuickTime will be a smaller file, but still, I would recommend that you always use 
the option add to Adobe Media Encoder, which I will explain to you how to use it in the next lecture. See you then.